Welcome and my gift to you today is this guided meditation where we will be dealing with the root cause of why there is no affection and love in your life. Mm -hmm. um, there might be reason from this lifetime or past lifetimes. And of course, having no affection and love in your life is a sad life. Mm -hmm. Do I have to explain why? So, for the guided meditation only, you might jump to this time. But uh, first, some mental framework and garnish to keep your mind satisfied. <laughs> so, we all know that experiment you know, with the monkey baby having to choose uh, between the wire mom, you know, with the milk versus the warm, cozy fake mom uh, with no milk and um, leading um, to starvation, you know, when the fur mom was chosen and um, fur mom always won. So the baby always chose the cuddly fur, mm -hmm. um, not the milk. So I'm, I'm not sure if that broke the heart of the scientist, you know, that did this kingdom. But, you know, if you look at the animal kingdoms, it is quite amazing you know, that all across the species, the good, friendly petting is always appreciated. Well, we know about dogs and purring cats and, and gerbils, but fish, frogs, lizards, even insects, of course, birds, and, you know, actually the Kindchen effect, um, meaning the um, small child effect, it's the German, and is that instinct um, to huddle and cozy and nourish roundish beings. And that's part of the uh, mammal kingdom, also this program. You know, so they have this round, fluffy little chickens, the chicka chicks, <laughs> and the babies, you know, they're very round, and um, kittens and uh, little doggies, all these uh, things, or even older ones like the Pomeranians, you know, those laptops, <laughs> dogs, uh, uh, they all have these roundish features which trigger the I gotta huddle and protect and love this little thing. And of course, estrogen, the Venus hormone, also has something to do with nourishing loving and cuddling. <clears throat> and if you want to have some funny um, biology with adult humor, I definitely, you should check out Z Frank. Um, it's, it's really nice. So, um, actually, when you look at the IQ of the children, um, there is skin contact. Very, very important. Um, for the uh, intelligence development. If there's a lot of skin contact, um, much higher intelligence, of course, um, carrying the baby along with you in your force field, a sling, and the baby can observe what is um, going on. They'll learn through higher stimulus, becoming gradually <laughs> introduced in the environment instead of um, laying in a box and staring at the ceiling all day long. This is what happened to me. <laughs> and uh, my mom wondered why I was always laying on my back, getting a flat head. It's, yeah, because I wanted to see where the action is, not stare at some you know, side walls of a baby bed. Mm -hmm. So, of course, there's also iodine, which is super important. And, yeah, again, outside stimulation. Uh, and, but, you know, the um, skin contact is really, really important. And so since my teens, I've been studying faces. And they use a system that's still respected in Germany today. And that was also promoted by the Rudolf Steiner Society you know, in Germany. So, and on top of this, I also, you know, read the clinical study of where um, the uh, every muscle in the face um, was analyzed according to the psychological signaling function in the head. So uh, I'm not only 
studying, uh, you know, studying many aspects of the face. And if you want, you can treat yourself to the video where I talk about this. But it gives me some understanding just from the outside to see what is going on in the mind. You know, unless perp somebody purposefully puts on the mask or completely relaxes their face, like expressionless face. Mm -hmm. Generally, um, you can see, you know, from subtle nuances in the face of what is going on. Mm -hmm. And you can see when there is love there. I mean, there's a little movement under the eyes, puffy cheeks, smiling, and of course, subtle head movement. And then even dogs can read. <laughs> And um, so also the um, signs, you know, of fake love and uh, other things. So, um, and as an empath, I can also feel, you know, real love. It's a sensation um, that you can feel. And um, as a, a yogi, um, I, of course, can feel it also in my chakra expressed and can rather quantify it, you know, quite accurately. So, why am I telling you this? Because I find uh, that uh, his, um, people are really starving for love. They're not happy. They're not smiling. When you observe them, um, when they're, um, you know, not being watched, mm -hmm. and then see whether they're smiling and happy. Yeah? And so you get an idea about the state of humanity. So, there are actually two heart chakras. There is the one that's commonly known at the level of the heart, and there's another one um, that is up here. That's where the thyroid gland, the representation of your immune system regulator, is situated. It's right there at the top of the sternum. And uh, when you massage around this and it hurts, you know, it's a good, you know, be very gentle and massage the pain away. It can save your life. And it will stimulate and heal, well, to a certain degree, support your immune system. Um, so this is where the higher heart chakra, and that's a very, very spiritual chakra, much more spiritual than the normal heart chakra, which is, you know, just, I mean, a great vibration, but on the lower plane. Mm-hmm. And, um, well, yeah, you can actually feel this if you're sensitive, um, so just smile. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to um, blast now my normal heart chakra. Just give me like three breaths. I'm, I'm not digital. One second. And now, um, here, the higher heart chakra. Let me um, run this here now. And now, uh, both of them together. And of course, the same thing should be done on the back. You know, this is just to show you, for, you know, as long as you're smiling and empathic, you might have felt some sensation here, like tingling, an expansive feeling, warmth. And for some of you, you may just only you know, feel a tingling in your hand or crown or somewhere else, unless you get cheated up. So, um, let's see. After all, you know, most uh, humans seem to be very starved for love and affection. And it seems in a civilized world uh, much more um, than where people live in a more natural environment. I've, I've traveled around the world, so... And many um, humans, of, of course, also experience much more love from their pets than they ever got from their parents or other parental figures. Really. I mean, um, those pets, um, you know, especially dogs, um, they can be lifesavers for many. You know, people with pets live longer for some reason. And um, 
so for many, these are the only ones, you know, that um, love them. And their love is very pure and unconditional. It doesn't matter how look, how you look, how dumb you are. You know, they, are, they will love you. And, um, and also the way kids are being treated. So I was raised in post-war Germany and they were rough on their children, you know, very military. Um, you know, the way they were brought up. And when I saw how kids were cherished and loved in other cultures, and it just blew my mind. Mm -hmm. And uh, <laughs> of course, I also looked uh, deeper into the human mind through um, hypnosis. Yeah. And um, of course, also Qi and chakra control. You know, where you open certain chakras, and that of course affects emotion and the meditation and other modalities. I spent you know, twelve years in ashram lives, very very strict. And I found out through my work um, that there are whole bloodlines. You know, where there was no love. Instead of love, there was lots of abuse, and um, starting as a child, abuse. You know, emotional mental, physical, and sexual, too. Um, so where uh, you, you were passed on from generation to generation. You know, the victims became the victimizers, and many times this was due to curses and um, other karma. You know, especially slavery. Oh, oh my God, slavery caused a lot of cursing from the slaves was not a good idea. If they would have known what happens to them, keeping them mistreating slaves, they probably would not have done this. I'm getting over it. So, uh, I found that uh, many root causes for not getting love and affection, um, were, and we will be dealing, you know, in the following guided meditations. So, uh, we will clear out also for our ancestors, which is very important. Um, we suffer from the misdeeds of our ancestors and their vows too, they affect us. And so on the other side, um, we have the right to speak for them and we will take care of it. So, um, you know, you give me a thumbs up and start sharing this your experiences that you have with the group here. Um, it will help in promoting this material. And if you're new to this channel, uh, make sure that you subscribe and ring the bell so that you be notified of new releases. I also do personal sessions on Skype and Zoom. And for those that are interested, they're of course much more to the point, you know, clear and ghost and things like this. Uh, and I do all the time. <laughs> so, um, first of all, um, close your eyes and smile and be asked um, absolute source, nobody, nothing beyond and above, and our high self and spirit guides to make sure that everything that happens in and from this guided meditation here is going to be for the highest good in divine harmony with the most benevolent outcomes and will clear also the root causes you know, of why there is no affection and love, or not enough affection and love in our life. Amen, amen, amen. Make sure you agree. And um, just to get nice and comfortable as a mystic, you start grounding. It means you um, pull the love from the earth goddess into your whole body with your breath. And then on the exhale, you send your love or your chi into the earth. This could be considered a traditional chi gong, but the smiling and the loving aspect is very important. You know, this makes it special, a big difference. All the beings uh, respond a lot better to love <laughs> uh, than to just force. You, know, you don't see many happy magicians that use force. Right? And we also asked for the presence of expert ascension teams 
that act for the highest good in divine harmony with the most malevolent outcomes and that are approved by our high self. And now we ask our spirit guides and our high self to run really strong powerful cords into the earth from our root chakra and our feet and dissolve any resistances that are there blocking us with the connection of Gaia. Whether this is for trauma from past lifetimes or black magic or entity or parasite attachments or dark programming from magicians like spells and curses or dark ET beings or higher dimensional, we like to have as much cleared as possible without us having to look at the details right now. Um, make sure you agree and do really deep breathing. Pull your love all the way in and all the way out. The stronger you breathe, the faster it will clear. The more you smile, the sweeter the chi will turn. Yeah, the smile is super important. I mean, you frown, it turns actually into a toxic chi, I would say. <laughs> If you want to have healing chi, um, just smile. Yeah, it's probably the most important mudra in my opinion. And yeah, we asked um, for our ascension teams and our angelic presences, our spirit guides, to make sure that we have the most benevolent outcomes from this clearing here, and also to help us, you know, get into higher minds. And we ask them to start clearing also our blocks and our crown chakra. Mm -hmm. Start now again, you know, clear all the typical resistances. Um, mm -hmm. And now start pulling your tongue to the palate. And on the inhale, imagine pulling in the love from the heavens, this means from Milky Way galaxy or from the higher dimensions. Like at the ceiling, I would start in, into your heart as a midway station. And on the exhale, you send your love over the tongue, which is touching the palate of your mouth, all the way to the ceiling, where you imagine your Milky Way galaxy. Don't spend too much effort focusing on the visualization. Just Feel the energy moving up and down with your breath and feel the emotional content. That's where the pay dirt is. That's where the importance is to make it really effective. <laughs> Smile, deep, good athletic breathing. The form is important. It will help a lot. But emotion and form have to go together. Otherwise, it's a dancing robot. <laughs> yes, so this is not the gym where we're pushing iron. Okay. And you probably feel a tingling in you. This means your chi level is updating. It's always a good omen or sign. And now start pulling in the love from the heavens and earth simultaneously into your heart. Very important bread and butter move. It makes sure that you stay in balance. And if I only um, run earth energy, I will become materialistically very focused in my body too. And if I only run heaven energy, I turn into an idealistic space cadet that has problems paying the rent. You know, has all those big ideas and projects, but can barely get out of the bed in the morning because there is no energy in the body. Mm -hmm. So we want to be connected to both those realms. Good. And now we ask that the divine aspect of your consciousness steps forward into your presence, into your awareness. It's always there, but of course you're not focused. Most people are focused on the external world and their thought process or maybe on their back or foot pain. Um, yes, smile. Mm -hmm. And 
You might just feel a little bit taller in your shoulders, more expansive. If you feel the urge to move your spine and adjust your spine, go right ahead. Let's see higher consciousness, let's, have, let's say higher standards. And uh, let's ask to be given a yes, which is a flow of energy from the heart to the head. Please do so now. Um, Please give us a no, which is a flow of chi or energy from the heart to the feet. Kind of feels like a downer. Please do so now. And of course, there are also other ways that your high self can communicate with you. It's just an inner knowing, happy feeling, sad feeling, thumbs up, thumbs down, yes or no written out. Um, seeing people, seeing things, you know, it really depends on how your higher self or subconscious communicates with you. Alright, so, um, let's just ask some questions and see how this goes. Let's just start very simple and you don't necessarily need an answer or clear answer for every question. If you get five or ten answers, that's pretty good. <laughs> And they're coming from you. You know, some of you are very psychic and you may get a lot of information and then later on you may even go back and clear those things up with other modalities. You know, this is, and of course, in a person session I just drill right down you know, and follow into the rabbit hole and go into the root cause. But this is shotgun right now. This is just fine. So let's do some simple questions. Do you withhold affection and love to punish your partner as a type of revenge? Yes or no? Do you have conflicts with your partner around the issue of affection or love? Yes or no? Do you have different standards or expectations? Yes or no? So what are your standards? And what are your partner's standards? Are there any discarnate attachments coming to you from the past or present or future or parallel lives influencing your affection and love, yes or no? Do you have a lot of personal karma? affecting neither the receiving of affection and love, yes or no. Is there a lot of bad karma from your ancestors blocking your affection and love, yes or no? Are there any spells and curses on you affecting your love and affection? There are a lot of those around, so most likely do you have some? But let's just ask, do you have a lot of them, yes or no? And uh, did you do vows in affecting you are receiving affection or love. Many times this is done out of guilt or self-punishment for certain reasons, or not feeling good enough, or for religious reasons. Hmm? Oh, I don't want anybody loving 
you know, besides God as a fanatic. So, um, did you do vows <laughs> to block affection and love? Yes or no? Mm -hmm. And so, you know, we asked our spirit guides and our high self to please clear this now as much as possible. Um, and, um, programmings around it, on the stuck entities, and discarnates around it, and if necessary, we ask for help to the highest divine beings. Um. Now, is there any conflict around affection and love in your family? Yes or no? Is this mostly due to ghostly attachments that are running on people and having their own agendas like hate or attraction or jealousy? Yes or no? Or are these disturbances mostly due to personal karma? You know, where past life interaction or other life interactions are not so nice. Yes or no? And how about ancestor karma affecting the love and affection in your family? Is there a lot of bad ancestor karma blocking your love and affection? Yes or no? And how about spells and curses in the family are going back and forth. Mm, this happens quite a lot, don't be amazed or shocked. <laughs> I'm absolutely not shocked about these things. Mm -hmm. So, yes or no? Yeah, pretty big time. Mm -hmm. And also, are there vows mm, in, in the family you know, regarding affection or, or love? This was rejection like that was also done many times. Alright, then we asked our spirit guides and our high self to please, please, please clear all these diverging programs, the bad karmas, the stuck entities that are stuck on the lower planes, the spells and curses, you know, all these impediments from us, from our timelines, as much as possible, if necessary, ask for help. Um, uh, uh. Now, a lot of people say that, you know, sex is like, you know, one of the big instincts in, in this world, and so a lot of drama around it. So, uh, was there conflict around sex regarding love and affection in your life, yes or no? Are there ghostly attachment of a sexual nature that affecting your affection and love, yes or no? Well, do you have bad personal karma around sex affecting your uh, affection and love? Yes or no? Like, you know, you might have you know, abused you know, your seduction power being a gold digger, taking advantage of people, breaking their hearts on purpose, or just for your own vanity. This would be things like that. And then, you know, in revenge, you know, they curse you or hang with you as a discarnate, <laughs> blocking you mm -hmm, from any good experiences. So you suffer like they did. This happens a lot. Now, is there any um, ancestor karma regarding sex on blocking affection and love? Yes or no? And also, are there spells and curses around sex? Many times this was done in jealousy, or when there was rejection. Quite common.
Cool. Yes. And uh, was there were their vows. You know, the sex and affection and love kind of got mixed up. And, you know, there was a lot of rejection going on affecting you. Yes or no. And now we ask the spirit guides and our high self to please, please, please clear these um, destructive, self-destructive programs and um, anything else you know, regarding this field what we just discussed. Um, um, also liberate any discarnates that are stuck around those issues in the lower astrals, as well as clear any other entity attachments and any other baggage, you know, around those issues from us and our subtle bodies. Um, 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 make sure you agree. And within about five seconds, you should feel lighter. Uh -huh. Start to kick in. So, do you have... Um, well, conflict and trauma around abandonment, affection, and love. Well, basically getting dumped, I would say. Um, that's a good common term. Mm -hmm. uh, yes or no? Are there any ghostly attachments um, with you, um, discarnates, that got dumped? Yes or no? Do you have any personal karma yourself around dumping others or getting dumped or abandoned yourself? Yes or no? Now, do your ancestors, you know, have a lot of trauma um, traveling through the DNA regarding Affection, love, and abandonment. Yes or no? And there are also lots of spells and curses that, um, you know, lead to abandonment of love and affection. Like, you know, whenever you are in love, um, do you know you shall, let's say, be abandoned and lose that love? You know, that is a lot of suffering. You get attached and then it gets ripped away. Attached, ripped away. You know, and then this trauma just keeps building up and building a pattern. So are you affected with spells and curses like that? Yes or no? And so that you're not maybe feeling only like a victim, did you affect others in this and past lifetimes with spells, curses, and thought forms like that? Yes or no? And how about vows? You know, you got dumped, you know, you were so in love affectionate and you just got abused, groped and abused and tossed. Mm -hmm. Did you do like bitter vows and affecting, you know, you now in love and affection? Yes or no? And we asked our high self and our, oh God, spirit guides and all our supporters to please help you know, clear these dark patterns, these dark karmas, these vows, curses, and so on. Amen. Amen. Now a big factor in people's lives, especially in past lifetimes, was around religion. Mm, I call these uh, corporate religions <laughs> because they are, operate like corporations. Mm. And um, so, let's say in Europe, you know, it was customary that you know every family, let's say, you had like ten kids. You know, one become a priest if it was a man. If it was, a, you had a lot of daughters. 
one would be become a nun, others would be married off, and, and so on. So, um, you know, a lot of people <laughs> ended up as monks and nuns that actually didn't really want to, but they didn't have much choice. So there is a lot of resentment, I find, you know, from between monks and nuns. And then, of course, uh, you know, they had carnal desire. I mean, they didn't even want to be there. And then they couldn't, you know, um, work on their instincts and affection. And so, uh, you know, there's a lot of um, conflict for many. You know, um, having this, you know, subdued or suppressed instincts. And then those that fell down from their vows of chastity, uh, you know, had a lot of guilt programs. So, you know, it was not a very happy situation. Yeah. So, let's just ask, do we still carry a lot of drama and conflict around religion, affection and love? Yes or no? Oh my god. Mm -hmm. And of course there was of course abstinence or having sex only for kids, you know, and taboos like this were put out and that nobody wanted to or could follow. Mm -hmm. So uh, is there a lot of guilt around your sexual practices, you know, or emotional practices, um, conflicting with the status quo of your corporate religion of that time, yes or no? Let's say when you were a nun and, or a monk or a renunciant mm -hmm, and your spirit was willing but your flesh was weak and you made stupid decisions mm -hmm, um, regarding affectionate love, mm -hmm, did you just condemn yourself or did horrible vows mm -hmm, or self punishment? even self-mutilation. Um, do you have karma like that or patterns like that? Yes or no? Hmm? Are there ghostly attachments um, to you, discarnates, um, that are promoting agendas like that? Yes or no? Do you have personal karma where in other lifetimes you were supposed to be celibate and got caught and like grunty, you know, fornicated. <laughs> and then lots got ousted, got killed, many nuns got stoned. And not the hippie way, you know, the <laughs> it was more the Israeli way it seemed. So did this happen to you? Yes or no? Or did this happen to your ancestors? Is there karma like that many times? You know, this also came with spells and curses from the pious public, of course. Um, so are you affected in your love life like that? Yes or no? And again, did you make stupid vows to suppress your love or your desire for comfort and love? Yes or no? <laughs> yeah. So please, 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 dear spirit guides, clear those vows. Clear those vows. And they're probably interfering with all kinds of lifetimes where we're not supposed to be living as the nuns. So let's have those vows cleared. Amen, amen, amen. Now, the previous situation was more like an imposed situation by corporate religions, you know, putting you into guilt consciousness to make you easily controllable because nobody could really follow those rules of abstinence. Right? And then you could sell, well, you know, for a couple of bucks we can just let you off the hook here. <laughs> so anyhow, um, that was corporate religion. Now, there was also spirituality. You know, like um, serious mystics, 
<laughs> people that actually do breath work and do exercises purifying themselves doing visualizations you know actual mystics as such like for instance the Essenes you know, or yogis or Sufis all the traditions they have you know their mystical traditions too and um, <clears throat> in, in many of them especially the transcendental ones um, so affection and you know, love between man and wife, you know, or woman, um, was seen like a kind of a gateway drug to carnal sin, getting you entangled in householder life, you know, getting you entangled in this world. So you are attached at the time of death and not thinking of God. You know, their idea was that you're supposed to constantly think of God or source. You know, I followed that path for quite a while. And it's definitely a good training for the mind. But mm -hmm, did we make any mm, stupid decisions, you know, in this kind of understanding? Yes or no? Mm. Or are there still ghostly attachments unto us, you know, so-called fanatics? You know, this could be sometimes teachers, this could be aspects of ourself. Mm -hmm. Yes or no? Now, do we have personal karma in these situations where we actually you know, went into carnal hell and sin? Yes or no? And are there spells and curses unto you? You know, to always fall down when you reach a certain level of spirituality. This is quite common, quite common. And not only done by yogis, but by other dark spiritual beings that do not want you to become powerful and self-aware. You know, they rather keep you dumb and stupid and open and traumatized so they can harvest your chi. Mm -hmm. Okay, so... <laughs> Um, do we have mouse around this? Yes or no? Okay, we ask the spirit guides and high self and source to please clear these issues now as much as possible without us having to look at them in detail. Um, um, um. So another really big conflict around love and affection um, is health. You know, it's also called STD, and like the syphilis. And when you look at history, um, you know, especially uh, you know the later European history or even American history, um, if you visited prostitutes the chance of getting syphilis was very, very high. And also for prostitutes, the chance of getting syphilis was very, very high. So in New York or, you know, in mining towns, they sometimes would only last two, three years, and that was it, you know, and then die. So, um, and of course, besides, you know, dying and getting brain damage, like you know, El Capone also did, mm -hmm. And there were other more embarrassing things. <laughs> you know, like um, like a visiting card, you know, so how did you get this off the toilet seat? You know, that sometimes may have been quite embarrassing. So were there, um, you know, because of STDs, you know, were there some uh, certain decisions made um, regarding affecting the love and affection in a negative way? Yes or no? Are there any discarnates um, promoting, um, you know, unhealthy programs? Yes or no? Do you have any personal karma around, you know, receiving or distributing STD? Yes or no? How about your ancestors? <laughs> Were they involved? STD in love and light. You may be running brothels or 
um, human trafficking rings, yes or no. And, uh, you know, are there any vows and curses around STD? Is you can get cursed by recipients? <laughs> or when you experience it yourself, did you make vows to never do having <laughs> and so on again? Yes or no? Now we ask the spirit guides and high self, you know, to please clear all these discord and programs, vows, spells, curses, etc. And also help these ghostly attachments to move on. Amen, Amen, Amen. Now, are there any spells or curses unto you? There are always a constant conflict, let's say, around sex, affection, and love. You know, there are some mean ones like this. Yes or no? And um, sometimes we did conflicting vows and promises in different lifetimes. Right? So, for instance, um, you in one lifetime, you uh, vow to always love Billy Bob. And then in another lifetime, uh, Billy Bob was an evil rapist. And um, you kind of vowed to uh, take revenge forever and ever. And then, of course, <laughs> in this lifetime, you might be stuck with Billy Bob as your husband or your brother or your father <laughs> and uh, it doesn't feel right mm -hmm. so are you affected by conflicting vows and promises like that yes or no and uh, do you have ghostly and other discarnate attachments that never experience cuddly love and affection and are blocking you from it, yes or no? Okay. And let's ask, did you, um, you know, or your soul uh, plan um, specific karmic lessons for you to learn around affection and love in this lifetimes? Yes or no? And now, what is the most important one of them? And have there been some dark ceremonies done in other lifetimes affecting your receptivity for affection and love? Yes or no? And this might sound very strange to you, but... Um, <coughs> Um, with certain techniques, um, you know, this can be done so you don't even feel things. Mm -hmm. So, of, of course, when you don't feel things, um, now how can you feel affection and love? It's just rubbing the skin, right? So, uh, these things can happen. Mm -hmm. And in how many lifetimes did you experience sexual abuse that still blocks your ability to receive affection and love? So now we ask our ascension teams and our spirit guides and high self to please, please, please rescue these aspects of us they are stuck on the lower astral plane due to these, you know, trauma and conflicts and, you know, karmic weight, and chi weight, etc., low vibration. Help them with forgiveness, clear any magic, you know, that still binds them or dark contracts where they got tricked or dark technologies, you know, for Draco uh, milking stations. 
whatever it is, please, um, you know, even if necessary, um, you know, ask Archangel Michael to bust them out mm -hmm, and bring them to the Arcturian love healing and ascension temples. Reunite them there with other loved ones that they don't want to leave without, even pets, and bring them into the heavens. Amen, amen, amen. Uh, let's ask now why this is going on. You probably you feel an upflow of love. And in how many lifetimes did you experience emotional abuse that still blocks your ability to receive affection and love? And in how many lifetimes did you get brainwashed by false philosophies or false interpretation of spiritual teachings that still block your ability to receive affection and love in this lifetime? Mm -hmm. And high self and spirit guys, pretty, pretty, please, you know, clear those <laughs> lifetimes and those programs too. Um, um, um. Now let's go back more to this reality, this normal life. Mm -hmm. So for you, was there a contradictory environment and like stimulation regarding, you know, love and snuggling? Well, first of all, did your parents snuggle with you? Yes or no? Did your parents snuggle with each other? Yes or no? And did anybody snuggle with you when you were a kid? Or did you cozy up with animals like cats, dogs, hamsters or parrots? Did you experience love with animals? Yes or no? Or did you snuggle with your brothers and sisters, you know, and felt secure and fine? Yes or no? Now, are there any ghostly attachment, personal karma, ancestors, or other karma, spells and curses and vows that interfere, you know, with this normal snuggling and love, yes or no? So we like to have those clear pretty please from our high self and spirit guides as much as they can do right now. Um, Now, really big one is the question, has there been some inappropriate invasion of your physical privacy? Yes or no? Of can mean, you know, resulting in blocks towards, you know, love and affection, right? That will be interpreted as abuse. Mm -hmm. So are there any ghostly attachment, personal karma around those issues? You know, from you and your ancestors, or spells, curses, and vows, you know, due to inappropriate touchy-touchy, yes or no. And we asked um, Archangel Michael to take predators you know, to the courts of divine justice, and so we can forgive them, you know, and we don't have to worry about you know, them getting away with it, so we don't have to worry about revenge, you know, the loss of karma will take care of it, so we forgive them, and we ask to be you know, liberated now from this trauma, mm -hmm, and be reunited and brought to the heavens with our loved ones. Amen. Now another big thing I always come across, you know, is there trauma around sexual abuse traveling in your family line? Yes or no? And it's quite common. Quite common. You know, some some families they're really hush hush about it. And in some, you know, they gossip at the knitting circle around them. Mm -hmm. 
are there some conflicting programming from early childhood you know, that leads to limiting or conflicting belief around um, love and you know snuggling physical closeness yes or no and as an example um, you know a mother may be having a mastitis that means a breast infection and then has to stop nursing and the child interprets this in as a personal rejection for some reason and you know this can close the heart and lead to all kind of emotional bloating mm? so did something like this happen to you a misunderstanding yes or no and now of course another big one i mean you know trauma <laughs> regarding uh, physical closeness, tenderness and love can of course come from family, school, co-workers and, and, and other people, strangers mostly. <laughs> so you still carry trauma in these areas you know, around physical intimacy and love, yes or no? Yeah, and we like to have those clear too by our spirit guides and our high self. Um, um, um. Now there's another reason for many, um, you know, there were certain taboos around affection and love, you know, that got beaten into you or that you just absorbed, um, you know, that innocently, you know, um, maybe not to do anything in public, I mean, don't do it on the front lawn in front of the kids on Sunday morning, of course, be discreet. Uh, but, uh, you know, there were all kinds of crazy taboos in, in many societies and many lifetimes. Um, are you blocked through taboos? They should be rather cleared now, yes or no. Yeah, let's have this cleared. I give permission for myself. Amen. Now another huge one is punishing yourself. So many of us have self-punishment programs for all kinds of reasons. Um, but the um, one of those aspects is withholding love and physical closeness from yourself. It's one of those aspects. Are you running a self-punishing program like this? Yes or no? Yeah, I asked my spirit guides <laughs> and high self to get on it. <laughs> Start clearing this now as fast and smoothly as possible. Um, so there are a lot of programs when we were like religious fanatics where, uh, I mean the Dracos, they really swung this very well. Um, where, you know, we see God as this jealous lover and in order to please God, and, you know, we had to, you know, of course, reject the love of humans. We had to renounce the physical closeness of humans mm -hmm. and maybe even to renounce wealth, you know, um, because like uh, St. Francis of Assisi, <laughs> you know, nothing makes you more humble when you have to beg for your food. Mm -hmm. and or depend on the mercy of God, you know, to survive. You know, yeah, if you're just barely hanging on, you know, you're definitely more pious and trying to be in touch. Like they say, there are no atheists in the foxholes. Yeah. But um, it doesn't necessarily mean that you should, you know, go into war zones so you start praying better. You know, I think there's a little misunderstanding there. So, um... <laughs> So we asked now um, our high self with the interaction with the help of Jesus and all the divine beings that really know what's going on, you know, to clear these misunderstanding between, and of course we asked source too, you know, to, um, to clear this misunderstanding between us and the jealous God. <laughs> mm -hmm. You know, all these um, really, you know, um, ways of trying to please God that is just completely wrong. Please um, do so now. Um, um, um. 
and then spread this to all my different incarnations and of course you asked for your incarnations mm -hmm. wherever this happened many times they were extremely sincere and just really misled so please help this now amen 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 we want some mercy and where we misled others you know we, many of us were also spiritual leaders and fanatics etc we asked for forgiveness and we asked that those that are stuck to this false teachings also be rescued now um, um, um. I mean, now one more time, you know, sometimes you, you know, people thought through sacrifice they can show their love to God or their devotion to God. And, you know, they would sacrifice what they loved most. And sometimes this would be love and affection. Of course, I don't think God was very pleased. Imagine your kid says, <laughs> you know, I really want to please you and I want to sacrifice, you know, as a gesture of this, you know, the most precious thing. And that's why I cut off my girl and, uh, you know, whatever you, uh, you know, can imagine. And, uh, you know, think about <laughs> how pleased the father would be <laughs> with such a useless gift. Right? So again, we asked my pretty, pretty please to clear all those stupid vows that we did to please God. You know, and lead us to the real essence of loving God. Mm -hmm. Amen, amen, amen. And uh, no, of course, humanity has been tinkered, or let's say uh, our DNA code has been tinkered a lot with by all kinds of gardening um, ET races or subterranean races. Mm -hmm. This is like dog breeders, you know, they bred um, humans and different races with different cultures, with different DNA, religions, and so on, and foods. Mm -hmm. And, and also, <coughs> you know, some ETs, you know, just wanted to have some nice dumb servants. And that's the ones we worried about. <laughs> so are there any, um, you know, implants, you know, and other uh, DNA programs that block our ability, you know, for affection and love, basically turning you into a Vulcan, you know, from Star Trek. Yes or no? Well, today we really getting into details. Mm -hmm. Are there any aspect, you know, blocking your love and affection um, from your inner child? Yes or no? Any blocks to love and affection from your inner teen? Yes or no? Any blocks towards love and affection from your inner tween? Yes or no? And if you have been 30 years, um, how about your 30 year old aspect in that decade? I said that aspect of blocking your ability to love and snuggle? Yes or no? About 40 year. Well, you know, 50 years, that's a, a rough decade. Mm -hmm. Are there any aspects of blocking you from that? Yes or no? And how about you from 60 to 70? quite congratulation that an old geezer like you watches things like that <laughs> yeah i'm 70 myself so congratulations mm -hmm. even for surviving that long yes 
Now, um, is there a lot of guilt that makes you, you know, block them? Yes or no? And now you're feeling undeserving of love and affection? Yes or no? Let's have those <laughs> blocks cleared now before we accumulate too much. I say, your spirit guides, pretty, pretty, please. Um, and, you know, keep on pumping heaven and earth love into the heart, send them love. Alright. Now, some of you people, um, they're really judging themselves and uh, they think they're too disgusting for affection and love. Maybe in this or past lifetime, is this true? Yes or no? Or do you have a big thing, you know, about rejection? You know, this in past lifetimes when you were asking for affection and love? Yes or no? Sometimes that didn't go so well. <laughs> I see that many lifetimes, you know, in past lifetimes. So sometimes it was appropriate, inappropriate even, you know, and the person got killed. And are there any blockages in your chakras preventing you to experience you know, love and closeness? Yes or no? So um, let's just, instead of going through all the chakras, let's just ask our high self to clear as much as possible mm -hmm, of those blocks without us having to look at the details right now. Amen. 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 Mm -hmm, and if there's still any disconnects or ancestors mm -hmm, or other beings that, you know, um, in negatively interfere, you know, with us, regarding, you know, experience and love and affection. You know, either if they're hard ass, bring them to the courts of divine justice so the case can be settled and we can forgive. If they're stuck or pray, you know, um, bring them to the Arcturian Love Feeling and Ascension Temple and assist them and unite them with their loved ones and bring them home. To the heavens, amen, amen, amen. Make sure you agree. And we ask that you please reunite it there with lost loved ones that are also stuck, stuck on the astral planes, like lost baby spirits, even pets and grannies. Um, and also, you know, liberate any discarnates and aspects, you know, that attach to them. You know, and uh, many people have ghost riding on them and then the ghost riding on the ghost. A lot of piggybagging going on. Mm -hmm. We like to have this thing clear too. Um, um, um. Oh yeah, feeling the upflow of energy. Mm -hmm. Just send love into the heavens that always works, helps them out. We also ask that any discarnates, you know, that are affecting us in the love and light <laughs> tenderness department that got stuck in false light heavens being tortured. Yeah, we like to have those liberated too. Um, um, um. Mm -hmm. And then um, there was also probably a lot of them hidden and cloaked and so on, so they cannot be found, so we asked the even higher beings to just sniff them out, have them liberated. And of course, we, we or our ancestors, hmm, hijacked others, but we like to have those liberated too, and we apologize to those. Hmm. Many ancestors, sooner or later, they were pretty badass. Alright. And um, if... You know, there's still some stuck. Um, we definitely ask um, that any other camouflage, you know, be cleared. It, 
button, also make visible and expose and you know what is trickery, misdirection, hidden agendas or legalese fine print mm -hmm. and have all offenders brought to divine justice. Um, then if anybody else is stuck, you know, we also ask that any entanglements that binds them like trauma, vows, curses, bindings, love spells or other technologies, crazy spells, glamours, deals, promises, contracts, candle magic, black magic, any form of bombs, booby traps, claws, hooks, scores, chains, jackals, crowns of thorns, crucifixion implants, and everything else that was not mentioned but needs to leave our space at this time. Amen. 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 And also to remove any hitchhiking entities that have attached to us and to return any valuable energy that got stolen from us, especially love energy, you know, there is a whole other thing like that, uh -huh. return that to us, you know, or love that we squandered away and, you know, is still with others and we feel incomplete. So return is all, you know, and of course also purify it before it comes to us. Amen. 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 And now we ask for the presence of expert healing teams that act for the highest good and divine harmony with the most relevant outcomes to please transmute any physical, astral, emotional, mental and spiritual trauma to healing energies and upgrade us to our divine blueprints as much as possible now. Amen. 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 Then charge us up to optimal energy levels and then protect our energies so dark side beings cannot harvest or manipulate our energies. Amen. 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 And I will count to three now and then you will be either you know, sleeping nice and deep and restful, having very uplifting dreams, or um, you wake up completely rejuvenated and balanced and uh, easily integrate you know, whatever upgrades you get. Hmm? One, two, three. Well, welcome back. I hope you had a wonderful time and you should be feeling a lot lighter. Mm -hmm. And while you're at it, you know, give me a thumbs up, leave a comment and subscribe if you're new and ring a bell. And yeah, don't drive. Mm -hmm. At least ground a lot before you drive. Drink a lot of water for the detox. And, uh, you know, you're just very, very sensitive, so stay away, you know, from Fight Club. Of course, this is just a shotgun style meditation, you know, like a real shooter game, you know, we kind of shoot from the hip. And uh, many times, you know, we hit a lot, we shoot a lot, we hit a lot. And, um, but uh, you, we keep moving on, you know, if you don't get an answer within five seconds, well, we on to the next session. So in a personal face-to-face -face session with me, you know, on Zoom or Skype, we are way more targeted. You know, we start, I just ask the high self once you're hooked up, and what's the most damaging program on you? And then we just follow the trail, <laughs> you know, anywhere it leads us, until we know enough so that your high self and your spirit guides can clear the issue. It's about... Karma clearing is about mostly around learning a lesson and to forgive in love and understanding. It's not that you can just say, oh God, you know, and I forgive everybody that wronged me. You get no insight, that doesn't work, it's not sincere. And tooth for tooth, you know, I killed you one time and now um, I get killed, that doesn't actually work. So it's really important that, you know, understanding the principles of forgiveness. It's really important. So, you you know, when you understand that, you can cut karma short, you know, quite fast. Um, and if you do not forgive, you know, you karmically basically overpay. Well, it's like, you know, having that same miserable rapist coming into your life, you know, all each lifetime. 
you know, once as your brother, then it's your daddy, then it's your uncle, then it's your lover, you know, and everything, similar story happens, you know, and it just simply gets worse and worse because you have this old trauma that could trigger us too. So it's, um, you know, much easier and better to just forgive, you know, give it over to divine justice and then be done with it, you know. Um, but enough of my mental dribble, and, you know, that is disguised as wisdom. Mm -hmm. Stay out of your head, get into your heart. You know, love is the drug. I love you a long time. Namaste. Namaste.